Courtney Chacon. I'm 39 years old and I'm a painter and a, a muralist. Um, I think I also do installation and pretty much other, I guess, mixed media format, um, large scale projects. Nice. So tell me, um, and how long have you been living and working in Albuquerque as an artist? I've been working in, I've been living in Albuquerque pretty much most of my life. I, I grew up in Corrales on the north side of town. And I also grew up in Chinle, Arizona and um, kind of lived a by residence lifestyle <laughs> um, early on. And I, I'm still very close to, to my family that lives out on the res. So I, I go out there quite often um, and still consider that home as well. And also I, I live in Corrales. My parents still live there in the house I grew up in. Um, and now I live in Albuquerque and I really love it here. This is my home and I think it's really a draw for a lot of the inspiration that I have, but also it's an important part of my, my respite um, and being able to have a place that I call home and come back to and, and are able to kind of nurture not only my practice, but also just myself. So I stay here. <laughs> So how do you think Albuquerque as a city like nurtures and helps foster the artist community, but also what are some of the challenges would you say living as an artist in Albuquerque? Um, I think that there, one of the challenges is that there in Albuquerque in particular is that there isn't an industry for the arts. Um, I'm a full-time artist. All, all of my income comes from creating work, but the amount of work that I do here is pretty minimal as to compare to doing at other places. And pretty much I have to. Um, traveling is a big part of my of my work. Um, I travel, you know, probably about every other month, if not every every month. Um, and I, I, there just isn't the arts economy here to sustain my practice full time. So that's definitely one of the challenges. Um, one of the things that I think is important and that I, I love in particular is that it's, it's a cultural, it's a cult, it's a cultural, um, landmark and I hate to say that because it makes it sound corny but um, there is a, a cultural heritage and there's a cultural presence here that it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world and um, being Diné, being Chicana, I relate to that and I am inspired by the work and the practice and the philosophy and all of that that goes into art making, art practice that has been and existed here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, that is a very important aspect to just who I am and the way that I think. Um, I like seeing that reflected in so many different things. I like seeing that reflected in the architecture that's here. I like seeing it reflected in the landscape. All of those things are not disjointed, um, for me anyway, because this is one of the few areas where um, native culture exists very prevalently. Um, our colonized culture that exists here is that of Spanish more so than it is the English colonial, which is really, really different until I started doing a lot more work in you know, like places like New York and really started understanding how, how we don't really have a tradition of English colonization here. We don't really celebrate that in any way. Um, and what we do have is Spanish colonization, but it's also kind of a different, um, I guess a different, a different feeling. There's a different art attached to that. There's a different culture that it's very embedded into the way that families have, are here, the way that um, communities were shaped and built. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy all of those aspects. I, I think, um, 
that is something that's very important and should be celebrated and also maintained, not to be homogenized with the rest of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, I, I celebrate that we're unique in that way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So can you tell me now like what um, you had been working on and what you had on the horizon in the early days of 2020 before coronavirus hit? And then how that started impacting you once it really entered into, yeah, came on the scene. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a muralist and I'm a public works artist. So right now that's about, I wanna say like 90% of the projects that I take on um, are, are outdoor public work pieces. And a lot of my practice is community-based. So, um, hold on one second. I'm gonna plug this in. Okay. Um, I thought it was plugged in. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so about 90% is public work pieces. And then of that, a portion of those are community-based projects. So it's me interacting, um, facilitating my projects through community interaction or community-based projects, um, which facilitate the work. And so the majority of my income kind of happens within the months that are from March up until August. Um, just these warmer months that we, we experience everywhere. And so prior to, you know, um, I guess coronavirus and this, you know, com coming on and, and uh, I guess all the onslaught of the pandemic, um, I had a pretty full summer. I was really looking forward to it. Um, some projects that were happening abroad, um, which is always exciting. It's always exciting to to know that your work is appreciated and kind of that also it's adding another layer onto maybe concepts that you're already working on and how that's received and and facilitated when you're in, in a completely different right. environment and country. Right. Um, so yeah, I had some projects ab abroad, had a couple of shows um, that were also going to happen abroad. And um, a, I want to say I had about one, two, three, four, four murals that were lined up in the process. So um, all of those projects, of course, have been postponed or um, the shows, I think those are a little bit more time specific. Um, they were canceled. A couple of them were, were canceled. Um, just because you know, usually galleries or museums will plan out their their yearly mm -hmm. um, schedule, and you know, you, it's like you can't really push it back because then then it kind of goes into another show's timeline. So um, yeah, it's for right now. It's maybe more just either keeping those projects alive, which a lot of the facilitators we've been planning this for some time um it's not like this thing just kind of happens and then okay like gonna put this in my calendar it's more like you know these are things that we've been pl planning out a year ahead so because i think that it is such an investment um and a time security thing for a lot of for the other end of the project you know the people who help facilitate it and do that end of it a lot of them are willing to try to figure out a time that we can continue on we just don't know when <laughs> um or maybe how that project will shift because we're also in a time that we don't know when we will actually be out of this i mean we talk about you know opening up the economy and all kind of those ideas and having you know going back to work but personally um i don't feel that I want to be in a position for my own safety, but also for anybody else's safety to be compromising um, any of that and asking people to engage in something um, like, a, like a project with me um, when we can't have full com comfort level. Um, comfort and trust is definitely a big par part of 
the way that I facilitate community engaged pieces. And if we can't have, you know, a common level of comfort and trust with one another and feel secure in our environment and healthy and good, um, there's no way I would ask somebody to do that. So um, for the meantime, it's just kind of, you know, waiting and seeing um, and seeing what happens. And I mean, until then, I've kind of had a small trickle of commissions come in, which is nice. And um, that has keep, kept me afloat. I'm, I'm always thankful of people still reaching out and, um, you know, requesting work. And for some people, it's a really good timing because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I could, I could take it. I could totally take it, um, which I don't usually, sometimes I don't have the time to take on, on commissions that happen just kind of up up like that it, um it's usually a little bit more drawn out so so it is it's nice you know just those i don't know those alignments i guess that are happening and keeping me still in work but are also in good timing for um the people who are requesting requesting this work to happen so right because so i was gonna say with the other ones it sounds like the commitment is still there as far as ultimately wanting to see it through at some point but um it could be mine too. I didn't know if it was yours or mine. Um, but it's I think like it's not as predictable as yours. Okay, it's okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. It's so funny. Well, I know it's like mine start going nuts at two o'clock every day. Can't do anything at two because the mailman comes and it's, you know, like berserk over here. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like, you know, as far as your other, you know, projects and things that you have lined up, like the commitment's still there. They want to be able to see it through. It's just a question of when, like the big question mark kind of to be determined. But I'm imagining that still impacts like your cash flow as far as like, when the money from those projects comes in like versus like if you were to create like an annual budget for yourself um that yeah i mean it's it's been very difficult and frustrating um you know i think the there was an there was a a lot of support from different um artist relief grants and things that you know different organizations or different institutions have put out to support artists but they're proving to be very very competitive and i don't a lot of them i mean i i feel like i filled out you know dozen a dozen of them you know and the comeback from that has not been that i've received a dozen <laughs> you know um it's been, I think I've received two, you know, and, and it wasn't the amount that I requested. Of course, it was like a small portion of, of what it was. And so, um, and then it's difficult because it's putting out that idea that like, oh, there's all this support for artists, but because it's so competitive and a lot of the applications also don't have any kind of, um, they don't ask you, you know, are you a single income household? Do you have dependents? You know, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm a single mom. I take care of my son. I'm the only one in this household that's making money. Um, my money, my income is solely on, on art. I don't, um, you know, have another resource that could pick up in any time soon. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I think that that's a little bit misguiding, you know, on, on how those those are working out. Um, and like I said, because I make my income within this, you know, five months, it's the income for the entire year, um, which is also, I think, hard for people to conceptualize, you know, that the bulk of what I make, you know, up, up until next year, at this time is basically gonna depend on these next couple of months and then maybe whatever you know i'm i'm like hoping you know in all the things that can happen is um you know i'll have a really busy august and september <laughs> if things work out um but maybe not you know i i i don't know i'm i'm 
probably most thankful for the people that I work with on these larger projects. And these are, you know, all the projects that I engage in are pretty big. Um, that they're willing to find different ways to, you know, give me a portion or give me some kind of down payment. Mm -hmm. Also doing talks. I've done a number of, you know, um, even talks for a classroom because everybody's kind of on this online schedule now. And I'm really thankful for professors that have offered to pay me, understanding that, you know, if I were to go travel and do an artist talk with them, that they would still be, you know, paying me at that point. So I'm I'm really thankful just for the ways that people have been creative and trying to find ways to extend and kind of create this economy still um, that's supporting artists and that we can still work even though we're doing it remotely, even though we're doing it from home, even though the, the context has changed some, that we can still be creative enough and find those outlets. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's, it, it's, it's such tricky territory. I know the people I've talked to so far, like one, like what you're talking about as far as like the financial relief or the grants and you know, even applying for those, I think everyone has like these question marks in terms of how much might be given based off just need, like the survival element of it, like need based versus like, you know, the credibleness of what you're proposing or whatever. There's all these different levels that stir up, I think, some different feelings in people um, that people have brought up. And I know too, when we were talking on the phone yesterday, when you're talking about you know, if we have the, this period where there's not lockdown or where things can happen and we can all resurface a little bit again, you're one person, you know, with maybe a team of others, but you can only do so much in that period of time. Like you can only okay. create and produce in that window, which would normally expand over, you know, more months than that. So I think that's a different, it's a whole different rhythm an ebb and flow so I think there's so many different things shifting um, yeah I, it's a it's a tough period you know I, I I definitely think think about that and I also think about how you know my practice may shift um, but those are all things I guess I'm willing to write out and see um, you know, I, I haven't like totally flung myself into despair and been like, oh my God, why am I an artist? There's <laughs> I, I think artists are very important. You know, I, I think that we provide an incredible lens and an incredible medium to communicate and to reach, reach the world, reach masses and provide an avenue of communication that encourages thought and emotion. And I think that's why even in this time, that's very difficult and there isn't, you know, we have these terms like essential work and all of this. Mm -hmm. um, people are still proving to me that my work is essential, you know, that they're willing to pay for it and that they're willing to seek me out and they're still willing to commission me for work. So um, that is just, it's, it's an overwhelming feeling of gratitude and just um, solidarity and and also just, um, you know, praise for, for what we're doing as artists is really valid. Absolutely. Can you tell me about like where you were this morning and like what you are working on currently right now? Yeah. Um, well, currently, I guess there's a couple of things I'm working on. I, I haven't um, kind of like got into these big like COVID projects or anything like that. Um, it's actually, for me, it's been a really interesting time because I think I've been a lot more introspective and in some ways kind of felt guilty about it for a while. I was a little bit struggling with this idea that, you know, um, I had to maintain the same level of productivity, even though it kind of wasn't attached to any work or any kind of deadline or process. And I was excited with that. And then it just kind of hit me and I was like, I don't really feel, I felt a little paralyzed, you know, creatively. And it just, you know, made me kind of also just like not wanting to go to my studio, not wanting to kind of be in that space. And um, I don't know, it just felt like I wanted to be here and, and kind of be more collective and, and do things in my home. So I had actually kind of taken a break off 
from doing some stuff um, and took the opportunity to kind of do more stuff that's fun. Um, one of the projects that I've been working on, and I'm, I'm not getting paid for this, I already got paid for it, but I started a project back in um, last October and it was for Valle de Oro. And it was creating these outdoor murals that were kind of going to, they're, what they're doing is they're doing a huge restoration project and it's a national uh, wildlife reserve. And except at one time it was used completely for um, cattle grazing. And so there was a lot of alfalfa and hay that was produced out there and it kind of took over the natural landscape. And so now that it's a reserve, they're restoring it back to um, its, its natural um, capacity. And the importance of that is because there's tons of birds that migrate there and, and they use that as a landing area. And, and uh, I don't know what birds do. It's really incredible out there because you just see so many birds gathering and it's like, you know, it's their own little social hour. <laughs> it's really, it's really funny. They're just like, they all do their own thing. You see an incredible amount of birds and it's really beautiful to see how they have this rhythm and they have this need to return to the same spaces and honor those spaces. Um, so this project was put together by Frances Francesca Sear and she had five other women work on projects that would kind of work as conceptual signage. So it was working together with biologists um, and staff and coming up with these mural like billboard signage things that weren't going to be like read you know wetlands or outdoor classroom but really that they would illustrate it and it would be this kind of piece that would work in harmony with the landscape that was created um and also to kind of serve as a placemaker while it's in this time of restoration that people could see it and mm -hmm. kind of know what's to come and and um i guess imagine it so I really love it. They all look completely different. And um, back when I started in October, it was kind of like this time where it gets super cold. And of course it's by the bosque. So it, it was just too cold <laughs> for my comfort. Um, so now that it's warm, I'm, I'm back there and I'm painting and finishing it up. And I'm just really taking the time to relish in the process. Um, I'm happy that the folks at Valle de Oro were really uh, gracious and just letting us take the time that we needed. Um, and so, yeah, I don't get that a lot on projects sometimes with commission projects or, you know, usually they're fit within this window of a deadline. So it's been nice to sit with the project and, um, figure out stuff. I don't know, figure out, I, I love that part about painting. I don't ever want my, my practice to be so mathematical and so, um, you know, just so automated that it's not, you know, I'm not discovering things and I'm not trying things and I'm not experimenting and I'm not making a mess and fixing it, you know? Um, I really like that part of painting and I, I, I feel like that's, for me, what it's about. And sometimes I don't always get that uh, opportunity to be that loose or be that creative in the process itself. So um, it's been really fun and just kind of a, a, a nice break to be out there at the end of town, nobody around, you know, just me and the birds, I guess, and painting. And so, yeah, I've been doing that, finishing that up. And um, the other one is working on an album cover. Um, that I'm doing for a friend. I'm doing the backside of her album cover, um, Heather Trost, and she's an incredible musician. I'm really, really honored to be able to create this for her. Um, so, and it's more, um, I have a background in sign painting and haven't done it in so long, but she really wanted this kind of particular style. And so for me, it's like a stretch of a project. It's something I don't haven't done in a while so it's like more fun uh -huh. than uh, you know doing doing what I usually do and you know gets your brain thinking in a different way right um yeah this... so it, it's more just typography it's all a, a typography piece 
um, just, you know, the backside of her album. Right. So it's, Well, it's working a different muscle. It just seems like really nice. I mean, ultimately, the things that you are working on, like I think about being down at Valladoro, that's like the ultimate place to be right now. Just in, you are surrounded by nature and like you were talking about the birds and their own rhythm and just being able to kind of sink into that um, a little bit just sounds so amazing. And I think the other things you're speaking to as far as that kind of, when it was harder to, you know, think about like the studio practice or, you know, kind of rallying, that's been a universal theme across probably every interview, just that like struggle to focus, that struggle, like this notion that we're supposed to be like producing, executing, and it's not where everyone's headspace is right now by far. So, I mean, yeah, just... it feels, it just, for some reason it feels, it's like, I feel slightly distracted, yeah. you know, where usually, um, I think as a creative person, and it's not the fact that like, we can't see anybody because I, I'm actually like alone a lot. <laughs> so I think I'm like totally socially isolated, adjusted. I'm fine with that. It just kind of feels, um, I don't know, like, yeah, like just a little bit like, like there's a shadow over you or something, you know? So um, it definitely has hindered the way that I work creatively. Um, and also feels that maybe that there's, um, I don't know, maybe maybe there is a collective spirit of introspection right now that we should be honoring. You know, I, I, I do think it's actually beautiful that we have this time to be in home, you know, because I think that there's been so many revelations out of that and, and um, there is a quietness. I, I've spoken with a number of artists who are like, I don't think I want to be as busy, <laughs> you know? and I, I'm also feeling that, you know, I mean, I, on one end, we really celebrate these projects we get to do. It's exciting. It's good. But there is sometimes that like you feel like you have to say yes to everything because um, it's an honor to do to do some of this work. And um, but it, it takes a, a, a large toll. Um, as an artist, I think it take for me in particular, um, it takes a toll on me physically, you know, um, just painting so much, painting upright, um, spending so many, I mean, I work, you know, 12, 12 to 18 hour days sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and in that process, I don't eat well at times, you know, I don't, you know, things get neglected. My son, you know, he, I, I think he's the one thing that keeps me totally grounded and you know puts me in check but you know he's had to like spend time with me at walls which I'm sure he doesn't want to <laughs> or like hanging out in my studio on the floor and you know watching movies and you know he'd rather do other stuff so I, I think it's really made me reflect on how to balance my life more and how taking time out to focus on home, focus on the smaller things, make my world smaller every now and then mm -hmm. um, is really good and healthy. Absolutely. Oh my God. Hold on just a second. Cause I want to talk about that. My dog's scratching just a second. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I'd left the door open for him. No, I think that's, it's so completely true and that's another thing I'm hearing from people and I think you know if we look at it you know in so many ways in which humans have been operating like what we're doing to the environment to mother nature it's just been unsustainable like as far as everything you know just pillaging and mining and extracting and everything but then also the pace at which everyone's been operating is unsustainable as well you know I just think like that's another big lesson. So um, it's interesting, like the specifics I'm hearing, and I think I was talking to you about this yesterday, the specific things I'm hearing from each person in their interview, but then also these things that everyone is feeling or thinking about and what's really resonating right now for people. Um, so I wanna talk about your son because you were just um, talking about him. So parenting right now too, and how that, is you know what are the dynamics with that right now and how's your son going through it and 
the balance yeah. of that. He's good. <laughs> um, my son is 14. He, um, I, I actually feel like this is like, um, I don't know, social isolation life is probably his best life. <laughs> he, he really loves just like being at home. He's got a community of friends online. Um, he's been able to, his, his school was good. <laughs> um, his school was really great and that they gave him all laptops. So transitioning to online school was um, really easy. And um, he's, he's a, I mean, he, he and I, because he's my only one and, um, you know, I, I guess that I have this like other kind of lifestyle, right? Like I don't have the typical nine to five job. Um, and I don't even as an artist, I don't have this typical, like I'm just at the studio and then I come home kind of thing. I'm like all over the place. Um, we've really learned how to live together you know he's really has knows the kind of work that I do and he know we we have a really good um I just want to say like a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. and have learned to be forgiving in each other's life um because my life isn't always predictable it's I mean as as from my job and there's been times that this whole place has been covered with paintings and I was working here and doing this and, you know, getting up at three in the morning to work until seven in the morning, you know, and trying to get a body of work finished or, you know, I often do that if I have deadlines and so I bring my stuff over here. Um, and I think that we've just been able to, to kind of, you know, work within that. Um, he's doing really good he's really like he's really likes being home <laughs> all the time right. <laughs> he doesn't want to go anywhere <laughs> he's like he doesn't even ask me i've even tried to be like do you want to drive somewhere and he's like no wow. I, I don't want to go out there <laughs> so um we just we're in our yard um i'm thankful for all of those little things i mean i'm thankful to have a yard and you know um he likes to cook so we cook a lot you know and he's he's doing really good as far as parenting goes it's been it's been very easy and i, I actually just really love it i love love the time that we have um you know to spend like this i i have um a niece and I think that's a, she's two and oh, I, you know for her I feel I feel bad for and I, I definitely feel for parents that are have littler ones with more energy and who are more curious and need more of the socialization and mm -hmm. um, stimulation and you know all of these different things because that's a hard time and you know even they don't you know they're they need to be stimulated in different ways and doing different things and it can be hard on parents, but um, for me in particular, it's it's pretty easy. <laughs> he, I mean, he he plays drums. He's obsessed with it. Um, like just now, I had to be like, don't play drums for the next, you know, thirty minutes. And, <laughs> no. and he's he's good. He's really. Um, it, for the for, I used to not like video games, but now I really do because it, it is the way that kids communicate and they're more than playing video games. They're, you know, they're talking about other things and, and they're, it's their way that they kind of problem solve and work through things. And I'm realizing that, that now because I hear my, I'm hearing much more of his interactions that he has while he's on games, which I actually appreciate. It's a fun, I think it's fun and healthy too. Right. So I kind of like somewhat low key, like wish I was a gamer. Yeah, so he's been really good. It's actually kind of the perfect age to maybe right. have to with this at, um, because he has, he has the cognitive level to understand you know, his responsibility in it. And 
we also just have a very open relationship and communicating. So um, it hasn't been fearful or it hasn't been challenging in really any way. Right. No, I think that's incredible. And he is at that age where, you know, as far as him independently being able to kind of have his own discipline with his studies or, you know, be able to, you know, put his focus or his energy into the things he enjoys and balance all of that out is probably, yeah, certainly more on course than other. Let's let him get outside. I left the door open so he can go be loud out there. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting because I did talk to another artist who does have little ones and it is, it's like a different, different thing for sure. Um, with your, and you do have a niece then, so I, your niece, that family here in Albuquerque or where are they, because I was going to ask too about checking in, do you have other family that's here or are they all out in Navajo Nation? Like where are people and how are you checking in yeah. with everybody? I mean, my immediate family all lives in Albuquerque um, or Corrales. My parents are out there. Um, and yeah, we're, I mean, we are definitely not seeing each other as much. Um, and we have really adhered to social distancing from everybody else. Um, or at least, you know, like my son and I have that way we can be there when we need to, you know, to help with my niece or something like that. And, and kind of just have a, have a close guard on, you know, our interactions and, and be really, um, just really under, understand our role and really kind of keep, know that when we are taking precautions, um, we're not only taking precautions for us, but we're taking precautions, you know, in the event I have to watch my niece for an afternoon or something like that. So that we're really, you know, we're really in cycle with that and, and thinking of them and really kind of sacrificing all other things so that way we can make that happen. Um, but yeah, it's been hard. It's been hard to, you know, definitely to not hug family and see family and kind of, you know, you do a drive-by like, hey, <laughs> yard's looking good kind of thing. Um, right. You know, and uh, we have like, you know, this running text between all of us and it's, it's um, you know, you, you find different ways to connect and, and I mean, things that don't change are humor, you know, uh, humor and the way that you, you know, you can just kind of instinctively pick up on, you know, communication with one another. I'm really thankful for that. Mm -hmm. um, and also with just other friends all over, you know, it's been been fun to just kind of be a little bit more free. It's, I also feel like sometimes with communication, we kind of got in a little bit of a rut of just being so like afraid, like, oh, I'll text them. I don't want to call them first, you know, that sort of thing. And um, I love talking on the phone. So I call people <laughs> all the time. Um, but yeah, I, all of those things are really important. Yeah, I know. I've been thinking I'm kind of bringing out my inner teenage girl that just like loves the phone. And so like more people are <laughs> on board with that now. So it's like these marathon phone conversations that have been really amazing. And it just feels really good. Um, so, I mean, there are those like positive things that are coming out of this too. And I think when you're talking about that going inward and that I do think more people are doing that. And I do think a lot of positive can come out of that. Are there other things that you see that might be you know, some some of the positive lessons or takeaways or what you'd like to see be some of the things that maybe come out of this just from the glimpse you've been getting from people? Yeah, I, I think, of course, I, I feel like we really need to stop our addiction to consumerism um, on so many levels. And this is, in a weird way, this it's like this weaning process, right? I, I think that so much of consumerism and entertainment, the idea that we entertain ourselves by buying, mm -hmm. um, is really something that just is not healthy. Like right. we we could be making, so I mean, we could be baking breads like people are now doing and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, taking up gardening and hanging out with our children and doing all of these things instead of, you know, 
having to feel like you have to buy things to validate your presence on the, on, on the, in the world. And feeling that work is really the only mechanism to validate that presence if you're making money. It really should be about your contributions and your care and how you, how you, how you make people feel, you know? I think that there's some, you know, quote or something you learn in elementary school. It's like not, how, it's not, you know, what you do, it's how you make people feel at the end of the day. So um, I definitely have been just overwhelmed by even the smallest acts of kindness that I've seen and the extensions of kindness and the extensions of thoughtfulness that weren't even, you know, um, weren't even like anticipated you know, and people, people taking that time really. And, um, I, as far as an artist, I really do hope on that note of consumerism, um, that I, at the beginning of this, and I'm feeling like these artist things kind of stream together at some point, but cause I've said this in another interview, but at the beginning of this, um, pandemic, I kind of went into this mode of like researching all of the old uh, other pandemics that have happened like the black plague and the spanish flu and you know all of these things and in the black plague at the end of it happened the renaissance um at, at the end of the black plague and I, I i mean that was such an important collective time and last year i was in italy and saw a lot of these works and they're incredibly beautiful and very contemplative um, they're not just like, it may be something very simple, but there are all these contemplative layers to it. And right now I think about the implications of work as being very thoughtful and contemplative. And I hope that as artists, that maybe we shift into this period of making just so much more thoughtful, conscious work that is really, um, going to sustain centuries and isn't about just these immediate, you know, kind of get you, you know, images or something that, right. that may look good on Instagram or may look good in a magazine or may sell in a gallery, you know, that really that we're thinking about, um, about the work we, we, we haven't seen yet and the work that would really make a difference for the future. Right. And I think that's so amazing. It's like looking for, cause that's something I wanted to do too. Like, yeah, looking if it if it's your own work even, but just thematically or from a content place or the projects you participate in, how do you see COVID impacting that? And I think what you just said speaks to that, but are there other things you've even been kind of thinking of looking on the horizon with the work you want to do or looking forward to? Um, that's kind of interesting. It's, it's funny because I, steered away from thinking too far ahead like that because I feel like I'm in it you know I'm I'm experiencing the impact right now I'm experiencing the emotions and a lot of it I haven't fully experienced yet you know I think we're all a little bit in this shock period and there was a lot of calls out to make art about COVID and while of course making art and you know having this idea like oh, okay I need to make some money I need ah, you know um, it was really more like I can't even put my emotions and my thinking and what I'm doing in, in a place yet because I've never actually experienced this myself, you know? Um, but I, I, uh, and so for, for that, uh, question in general, I, I kind of don't know yet. You know, I, I feel like I just want to allow myself to experience this and experience um i i feel like collectively we may go through a period of grief you know i i think that we're experiencing a, a time right now that you know they say that there's stages of um you know letting something go or of trauma and and part of that is like this denial period and where things maybe feel a little disjointed and and you're not really sure how to experience it, but then there may be a period where we, we start to realize the really um, 
just the full impact of everything. And that may not happen for a couple more years. I don't know. Um, again, this isn't anything anyone in this in this generation, um, you know, even in our grandparents' generation, for those of us who still have grandparents, have been able to experience. So, um, for the most part, I just I just want to be conscious and collective and. Mm -hmm. um, really uh think about the work that i want to make and I, I i have a feeling it'll change no matter what right. you know i mean it's almost like inevitable because if you're an artist and you're thinking unless you're just commercially based artists and you're making a product all the time i think you can't help but to be changed by what's around you um in the social sphere that you're involved in right i know and i think it is it's so much from that question page where we're question phase where we're still just kind of sifting it out and trying to figure out what it is and yeah there's more questions than answers certainly there's so many unknowns and so I think it's like yeah being in that place where you just kind of allow yourself to be okay with the unknown or feel what the unknown feels like and just be in it is really important right now um so um the last question I've been asking everyone um you know, you don't have to have anything solid for it, but I've just been asking everyone is where do you see yourself a year from now with your work, with your pursuits and. Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I still feel like next year I'll, I'll still be making work. Um, I, I don't feel like that'll go away. Although as an artist, I'm not afraid of changing, you know? I mean, I'm a painter and I'm a muralist, um, but that's not necessarily who I am as an artist. An artist defines more of the way you think and the way um, maybe you can see it over time, the way that somebody is, is, an, is an artist because you start to see their style and the, their approach and their way of thinking throughout a collection of work or a body of of what that is. I don't I don't know if I if I will be a painter. I I think I'll always love painting. I love painting. I really do. But um, I don't. I always say that I don't. Every mural I do is closer to a mural I won't. Mm. Um, because I don't see my it's it's incredibly hard work on your body and I don't see myself doing it for forever um and in that I am also very curious I I think that that's one of the things that keeps me involved in 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 an artistic field is that I I I like being curious about things I like thinking about mediums and and where that might go I also teach and I like that side of of thinking and, and being able to, um, you know, ha have conversations with somebody who's learning and, and kind of fee have this feedback loop of an idea or an exchange. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think all of those things are, are possible and are on the table. Um, even within my own practice, there's been shifts that have kind of moved into architecture and thinking about mm -hmm. space as far as, um, instead of being so concrete and it being more of like talking about a painting and a 2D thing that now the work has shifted and being more space spatial relationships. Mm -hmm. And even that has changed away from painting and, you know, come into different notions of, like I said, architecture, community or planning, um, landscape, uh, all of those things. So I really feel like anything is possible. <laughs> Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, a year from, from now, I'm going to be doing this and this will be exactly what it is. I definitely will still be making work. Um, but I'm always open to the journey, you know, I'm always open to what, what is out there. I think that that's just life in general and what's exciting. Yeah. Um, and if something is completely different and new, um, I'll definitely try it, you know, and do it. That's right. just who I am. <laughs> Excellent. Is there, um, when I was talking to someone else, I was asking about questions that 
other artists would maybe want me to ask my future interviewees, like, what would you like to hear? And I know as far as being willing to try something different, his question for other artists would be like, is there anything like the weirdest thing you've done during self-isolation or just something unexpected that you took upon yourself or did or, you know, ventured into new territory or new promises you've made to yourself in this time? He was curious if there was anything new that people had tried out or <laughs> unexpected or strange or weird. Funny. Yeah, I was thinking of a funny thing this morning and, um, it, you know, everybody's been on this like, what positive things have you done during quarantine that you're going to keep up? And, you know, everybody's like, I bake bread and I garden now and I compost and, uh -huh. you know, I take baths and all this stuff. And I was thinking, I wonder what the bad habits are. Like, what are the bad habits people have? And like, I've started eating ice cream bars in bed. <laughs> And it's like this thing that I just, I don't know, I probably shouldn't be saying this on camera, but like, it's this thing that I do that brings me so much comfort. And like, I don't know, I'm like, who cares? I'm here alone. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this in my bed, chocolate, lit, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't know if that's a habit I'll build on. <laughs> but um, it, if there's something that is, positive or something that I would that I would keep doing as part of my practice um hmm one thing that I have been enjoying doing more recently that I hadn't really given my chance myself to do um is really to dive deep into music again mm -hmm. not playing music but listening to music um, and really kind of, I mean, uh, this was something I did as a teenager, but really like find those spider webs and those connections of musical genres and, and artists and where they overlap and kind of, um, start falling into other genres and other, other places. Mm -hmm. And some of that has been because of my son, my son is really interested in music and, um, he's really in, he's a drummer and I think it, it's kind of fallen into seeing his excitement around music and, you know, introducing him to some of the stuff that I know, but also just realizing how inspiring it is and how much of understanding a different, um, a different medium and really diving into a different medium that's completely different from what I do and looking, you know, I, I could sit here and look at artists and no artists and kind of research painters all day long, but really to look at something completely different and appreciate it um, deeply is something that I would love to keep doing and pull into my practice just because it makes you think in a different way, mm -hmm. um, in a completely different way that I think we don't always give ourselves time to do, you know, it's, right. it's nice to do something different. Yeah. Thank you so much.